let's talk about The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. So this is the first book in the Devabad trilogy. It's, uh, well, the setup is this. Nari is, and I don't know the pronunciation there, you'll have to forgive me if you know what it is and I'm wrong. Nari is a young woman of unknown origins. She lives in Cairo in 1799 or so. Uh, she's got magical healing powers. That's the, the real setup for her. Uh, she accidentally attracts the attention of an evil genie and then accidentally summons another genie or jinn to help her and that leads her into the secret world of the jinn and uh, who are magical peoples uh, who live in their own cities which are invisible to humans they are in our world but they're invisible to humans you know there's that that kind of setup might remind you of neverwhere or of harry potter even that sort of half urban fantasy uh, certainly neverwhere is urban fantasy the main setting in this uh, series is the great city of devabad uh, which is the capital city of the jinni it's ruled by an ethnic group of jinn called the gaziri but it's got a very large population of devas who were the original ruling group or ru ruling ethnicity of devabad um, and the different ethnic groups of the jinn half track to certain real world ethnic groups that it's something where they come from different areas and they have particular cultural customs uh, and pro proclivities and, and tendencies uh, culturally and we follow through in the book two viewpoint characters we follow nari who i've mentioned she's the audience surrogate she is basically a street urchin uh, though at a slightly older age she knows nothing about the world of the jinni uh, she it kind of is in, as new as we are to it and has to learn things the mysteries that come up and have to be solved are ones that she is an alien to as well and we also follow follow Ali uh, Prince Ali the genie uh, a Gaziri prince from the royal family of Devabad so I'm going to interleave the strengths and weaknesses here so here is a strength there are great characters all of the characters are pretty strong I enjoyed them all when they were you know on screen Ali and Nari the two viewpoint characters are emotionally sympathetic uh, they've got complex views on the situation uh, they never they're not uh, cheap or simplistic they have competing loyalties competing desires in themselves and then as well as them there are also there are many good characters or worthwhile characters but uh, the two competing moral or political poles of the story are characters called Gassan the king of Devabad and Dara two visions of Jin society They've got strong convictions. They make big decisions in the book. And their reasoning and their actions are on the whole compelling. You want to agree with both of them even when you really do not agree with both of them or what they've done or the decisions they've made. A weakness. Awkward prose. This is the debut novel of the author. She had written some, um, some short stories before. And it sometimes reads like a debut novel, if you know what I mean. Uh, the prose is sometimes stilted or forced. An illustration might be forced, you know, you're, you know that it's seeking effect. Um, an expression of emotion on the part of a character might seem a bit explicit or obvious. That is to say there's some telling not showing at points where you want the showing and not the telling. It happens regularly. It's not crippling, but it is something I noticed. A strength. Mysteries, I mentioned that. There are lots of mysteries that work really well. I'm not going to say anything else, but this is a book that is good at setting up a sort of Ah, what's going on with this thing and slowly unfolding that over the course of the book and I, through the trilogy as far as I can tell downside weakness weird tonal shifts there are some, some some strange moments or strange shifts where the book feels like one thing and then suddenly it's another thing and it's not in a dramatic or cool way it is not like a, a actually this is really a different genre and it's really cool reveal rather you, I, at least in a few cases, went, huh, okay. And there are a few of those, uh, but it's particularly true, this is illustrative. There's a couple of points towards the end of the book, um, and it's not really a kind of, I think, any kind of meaningful spoiler to, to say what they are, uh, these two connected points. Though there is some violence in the book, otherwise it's not particularly, generally speaking, difficult uh, in terms of content for, for most people and uh, it certainly means that the what you might think of the the, the age is uh, the age limit on the book is 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 lower than it might otherwise be um, and 
that's so well you get used to you expect it to be a book that you know some teens some pre-adult teens might be able to read quite comfortably uh, but then though in a way i can cope with the increase in in the violence toward the end of the book in some scenes that there, there are it's also got um basically it's particularly restrained and specifically there's no swearing up until a point where there is an incredibly sweary scene and again if there's an expectation of one thing and then it switches that's a tonal shift that needs to be justified and i don't think it is justified uh, there's also the other really um the really bad moment in that in that passage is i think a really bad trope is where friendship is never allowed to be friendship you know where there are no friendships in a book or in a film or whatever it is everything is secretly romantic or something else you know there's secretly a rivalry in there and i think it's an unhealthy trope uh, at the best of times but here the moment i'm thinking of is also executed very cack handedly it's just not very good or satisfying um it's not heavily uh, signposted or made a thing that you can really buy into or care about and i think so that that's a few things where you have expectations upset and tone shifted in ways that just do not work really i think for me or probably for for lots of people a strength though i said about the political poles of the the book uh, and i talked about the mysteries and that kind of connects here to it's politically deep and i think an interesting realization is that this is though in some ways it's definitely more simplistic and limited than a song of ice and fire in terms of politics uh, and certainly sometimes the execution uh, the kind of literally the written execution the stylistic execution of such things isn't perfect it has to be said that in terms of political depth and reality and the sense that these are real situations with real people and this is as politically deep as a song of ice and fire or uh, other similar politically deep books i mentioned gasson and dara um and the point is that not just are they compelling characters but they are part of this whole story of how politics works out in Devabad, and it's all very compelling the different groups of jinn the different sub factions so not just the ethnic groups but the different factions within those ethnic groups the different concerns they have uh, for instance there's the shafit who are not themselves an ethnicity but are part jinn part human and are a subcaste. Uh, they are kind of a, an, an oppressed underclass and how they deal with that and how other characters deal with their plight through the books or through the book sorry is really interesting it works really well uh, and the ways in which the different factions clash and sometimes their interests align sometimes they don't all executed really well what makes the world feel alive in this case is less the magic which isn't a very strong element though it is there and it is fun um it's basic is softish magic um nor is it the setting description there are moments of attractive prose and description but on the whole that's not this author's uh, strong point but rather the dynamics of the groups and the characters are very very good and uh, finally a small thing uh, for most people but for me the other thing that is handled well in my view a thing i i often notice in books i talked about this in lord of light a little bit is that religion is handled well uh, the religious motives of for instance there are some conservative muslim genies uh, which basically they interact with human society and uh, and some jinn have adopted conser uh, islam and, and kind of dealing with conservative islam in the book or again zoroastrians uh, or rather the devas have a religion that is zoroastrian like fire worship is the pejorative term for it they all make sense the religious characters have beliefs that are coherent to them um, and those beliefs are treated respectfully by the author even where we are invited to feel critical of them and um, they're treated respectfully and in a way that uh, thinks of them as okay what would happen if someone believed this it's something brandon sanderson is good at too of course um, and it's it's a badly underappreciated area of fantasy writing because it's why you get characters who do things either for purely private emotional reasons uh, or kind of almost at random um, because their ideology doesn't really match up with why they do things and this book is very good at connecting character politics uh, belief and all those things together for a debut novel it is i think very promising i've moved on to the the next book in the trilogy uh, and i assume if i like that i'll read the third in the trilogy too it's not perfect but it's very good if you've read it Talk about it below in the comments. Tell me what you think. Until next time.